On the bench today we've got a classic Emerson tubed radio. This is an AM radio. This dates from the 1940s. Uh, I don't know exactly which year. Uh, the labels that identify the particular model uh, have been removed. Maybe we'll get some more information when we look inside. But I thought it would be interesting to turn this on and check it out. It was advertised as restored. You can see it's in very good shape. It's got a very nice luster to it. It's uh, been cleaned. This uh, this is new. Uh, clearly this is modern plastic. The back is missing off of it. Uh, so you know, this is all open and uh, if we want to make this into a player, we should probably close that up. We'll, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. Uh, and uh, it's got a new modern uh, power cable. And you can see that it's polarized. Okay. Uh, and this was advertised as restored and with a new power line installed to make it safe. So given the previous video that uh, that we made on the All-American 5 design and the importance of isolation figured we would just kind of look at this uh, take the advertiser take the seller at, at his or her word and and see how this works so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in and I'm not going to plug this into an isolated line I'm going to plug this into the wall power uh, and we're going to see if if in fact this is uh, this is safe to play even with the polarized power cord. <clears throat> All right, so there that is plugged in. Let me reorient this a little bit here and move this around. All right, so in the background here, let's move a little bit closer. So in the background, we've got our bench meter on, and it's on volts AC. Uh, I've plugged the radio in, haven't turned it on yet. So we're just going to put one probe on the chassis, and we're going to put this other probe on our oscilloscope handle, which is uh, grounded. And look at that, we've got 120 volts AC between the chassis and ground. So the chassis is hot, and um, I commend the restorer for putting a polarized plug on there, but that did not render the radio safe. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take the radio out of the chassis and look around and see uh, what other issues uh, may or may not be there, and uh, just you know, all around look at the design of the radio. All right, we've taken the radio out of the chassis. Uh, when you do this on an old radio, I'll just show you here on the, usually the bottom, there are three holes here, here, and here in this case. Uh, and they just have little, little screws that uh, are removed very easily and those go through the Bakelite chassis into the metallic part of the chassis. So you can see where this just threads in right there. Um, so how does this look? Well, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. It's 70 some years old. Uh, this is a little loose. This, uh, this is not too bad. It could stand to be cleaned up a little bit. You can see where the speaker has been repaired uh, with some uh, probably rubber cement. Looking at the inside, you know, it's, it's a little dirty, but it's not too bad. Uh, at least two of these tubes are conceivably the originals. You can see this tube right here is actually branded Emerson and so is this one back here. The other three, remember this is an All-American 5 design, uh, are 
not Emerson branded. There's a GE, uh, what looks to be an RCA, and, and another brand. Uh, so the inside, I've seen, you know, better. I've seen worse. One thing that I find appalling right off the bat is, you can see this down here, the capacitor that couples the uh, antenna into into the radio circuit itself is a wax capacitor. It's uh, got dust, if not mold, growing on it. It's a 0 0.002 microfarad 600 volt capacitor. Uh, there's no earthly way that that capacitor uh, could actually function at 600 volts. And I'm surprised that it was left in there, even though, of course, of course, of course, there's no high voltage on the antenna. Uh, it's just good practice to replace those anyway. So we'll end up doing that. Let's look at the bottom here. Try to do this in a way that you can see. Uh, so, you know, obviously there's... Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's uh, you know, two, three, four nice modern uh, replacement capacitors. These are well, these are Mallory capacitors right here, and that's fine. <clears throat> I see this uh, old electrolytic can, which appears to be still wired into the circuit. Uh, that's not good. There is no way on earth that that could be uh, that could be a functional capacitor. Probably leaks. We'll find out. Uh, but either way, we're going to replace it. Uh, and uh, you know these resistors in here. So you know, here's one. Here's one. Here's one down here. Uh, n I see no new resistors, um, and if these are indeed 70 years old, I guarantee you that these carbon composition resistors have aged and uh, uh, drifted out of value. We'll unsolder a couple and just check to see how far out of value they are. Uh, I could be surprised, they could all be fine, but uh, I'm pretty skeptical. So, uh, you know, I don't mean to ding on the person that quote-unquote restored this, but um, I suspect that they just bought an old radio, they polished up the cabinet, and the cabinet looks great, and they quote, recapped it, unquote, and declared it, uh, declared it restored. And that's a little less than acceptable. And especially when the power cord uh, doesn't go through, doesn't go directly, the hot side of the cord doesn't go directly to the on-off switch. Uh, it actually goes directly to uh, a tube and probably the, um, the rectifier tube. Okay, so uh, I'll be right back. When we uh, return, we'll have desoldered a couple resistors to check those, and we'll figure out how to check this can. Before we desolder resistors and change capacitors, there's one thing that I wanted to point out here on this radio. Um, some owner at some distant point in the past, and this looks like it's these uh, markings don't look like they are recent, but uh, you know, somebody's very helpfully gone through and labeled which vacuum tubes should go there. But if we take these out, this is neat. I've never noticed this before. Uh, that's not to say that it's unique or that, uh, you know, that I, I've never come across it. It's just to say I've never realized it. Let me get some light and shine on here. I think this will help, yeah. So you can see in this tube, um, in the tube socket, that it's marked 35Z5. Uh, 
five. Um, and in fact, when you unplug the other tubes, do this safely because the design here, something else you should point out, the design here, this uh, metal uh, brace, which, wow, you know, it looks like it's an aftermarket uh, addition. In fact, it certainly is. That That is not an original hole there, and this has got scrapes all over it. So this brace someone put in here, and it was probably not a very wise thing to do because this sharp point is right next to the glass envelope of that tube. So, um, right. Anyways, we take this tube out and we shine the light back down here again. You can see that this one is labeled right down there. Uh, 50L6. So that's kind of handy. Uh, you don't have to go through and label these things uh, because Emerson has taken the liberty of stenciling in what tubes go into which sockets. That's nice. Just wanting to make a point here. Uh, I just removed this old wax paper capacitor out of here. Uh, and when I just kind of visually looked at the antenna, uh, earlier in the video I made this point of saying that you, know, you would never ever have high voltage across that capacitor, but in fact, um, in fact you did, the way that this is uh, currently constituted. This one end of the wire antenna uh, goes straight to and is in fact soldered to the chassis right there. So uh, whatever's on the other end of this capacitor terminal on the back of the antenna, uh, in fact, is uh, not isolated from high voltage if this capacitor is leaky. So I thought it would be interesting just to demonstrate once and for all um, just how leaky these capacitors can become after 70 years. And that's what we're going to do next. I've put the paper capacitor on this Heath kit uh, leakage tester, and uh, what we're what we will do here is we'll take it off the bridge and put it on leakage test. So at three volts on, it is not leaking. You see the eye is open, and we're going to go up to six volts, and it's fine. Ten volts, and the eye is really squinting. I go up to fifteen volts, it's <laughs> not opening at all. Um, so 20, 30, 50. Um, this capacitor is very leaky. Uh, it leaks at six volt, uh, 10 volts. So away it's going to go. I've taken this um, resistor and I've cut it off right there because I'm highly skeptical that it's not drifted. So I just cut it off instead of desoldering it. And the color code here, it's probably a little bit difficult to see in this light, is orange, black, green. Which means that this resistor should be in the neighborhood of 3 mega ohms. So let's just see what it matches up to be. Um, wow. Uh, so it's off by a factor of over two. This weighs in at nearly 6.8 mega ohms. And I think we're just going to see that all the way through with all of these resistors. So all the resistors are going to have to go, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. But let me zoom in here on one thing. And uh, this is a real shame. The wire leads that are coming from the uh, IF transformer up here. Uh, these are all rotted away, the rubber insulation. And this is particularly dangerous uh, because you see, you know, over here, these are butting right up against the chassis. And over here, this. Uh, this is strewn, this is laid right across several pins of a vacuum tube. So um, 
this is just a ticking time bomb and we're going to have to deal with the insulation on those particularly when they're in proximity to either the chassis or high voltage pins on a vacuum tube. Alright, so uh, this restored radio has got a lot more work that needs to be done on it. This is going to end up being a uh, not a single video. This will be, end up being several videos, at least two, maybe more. Um, and to, we'll just go through this. So again, we're going to have to change resistors, we're going to have to deal with the uh, uh, rubber rot on the insulation for some of the wires. And you can see, as you look down through here, there's probably other wires that need to be replaced as well. We have to replace the electrolytic capacitor can. Uh, and I already replaced the capacitor on the antenna. All right, well, I think I'll stop there. And uh, in part two of this video, or the next video, we'll come back, uh, hopefully after I've changed the resistors and figured out how to deal with the insulation on the IF transformer. And we'll see what else needs to be addressed before we uh, plug this in and listen to it. Thanks for watching as usual. And if you like this, if you find it interesting, please give it a big thumbs up below and there will be more to come.